Cornwall is a place where history, culture and jaw-dropping landscapes collide. From its dramatic coastal cliffs to its charming villages and everything in between, it stands out as one of the most picturesque corners of the UK. Over the next few minutes, we'll take you along on our 6-day road trip from London to Cornwall, where we take a pit stop at a glamping site, marvel at stunning landscapes, experience different beaches, explore intriguing castles, and immerse ourselves in the region's culture and food. If you're new here, welcome. We are Sakshi DJ and Little Pixie. We share our travel and vegetarian food explorations from around the world, hoping that you'll find your next food or travel inspiration here. We left from London early on a Saturday morning in September. This time we were driving our own car, but in the past we rented a car via Turo for our Cotswolds road trip and the experience with them was excellent. As we had a toddler in tow, we decided not to drive all the way from London to our final destination, St Ives in Cornwall in a single day. Instead, we decided to break the journey at a little glamping site near Wimbledon Lake in Exmoor, a 5 hours drive for us from London. We stayed in a cute little tent on a farm with a gorgeous view of the lake and a picnic bench to enjoy it from. Inside there was a double bed for us and a smaller bed for Pixie. There was also a heater in case it gets cold and a large table with plates, bowls and cutlery. There was also a camping stove with a gas cylinder to prepare our own meals, which we did and immensely enjoyed the experience of cooking as well as enjoying it under the sky. The property is only a short walk to the activity center at the lake from where you can rent kayaks and other water sports equipment. We went for a walk to stretch our legs and to enjoy the beautiful views on a gorgeous day. The setting was incredibly tranquil which instantly lifted our spirits and put us into a holiday mood. So our stay here reminded me of our New Zealand stay which we did few years ago and it was a similar glamping experience uh, so when as soon as we arrived it was just amazing views uh, looking over uh, lake wimbol uh, which was just amazing the lake and the view over here was super surreal and then the sunset in the evening was just amazing all the pink color with the water and the green colors It was feeling this ah, relaxing experience, and even the sunrise was so magical in the morning. Uh, it was like all foggy, foggy, and it was just mind blowing. The parts we really enjoyed was that uh, cooking your dinner outside in the on the table and enjoying in nice cool weather the hot dinner, and also when we cooked the breakfast in the morning with the sun out, it was just amazing and magical. It was just amazing. So in terms of the stay this is not a luxury glamping uh, site by any means but we really enjoyed enjoying the simple things in life over here um and it can be a little bit challenging uh, especially with the toddler so this is the first time we tried this out with Pixie and overall it was not bad at all for all the reasons that DJ mentioned uh, I think it was worth it so yeah I'm really happy and so thrilled that the weather on both days was so uh, nice and bright as well The following day we left the glamping site towards St Ives in Cornwall. What we learned while researching is that St Ives is expensive when it comes to stay options and parking is always a problem. So instead we chose to stay 20 minutes away from St Ives center in Carbis Bay. We stayed in a house we rented via Airbnb. It came with parking and had a comfortable and cozy living and dining space. The kitchen was large and well equipped. The master bedroom had a large and comfy king size bed and the second bedroom was ideal for kids with some games and toys to keep them busy too. The bathroom was nice and clean and overall it was a great stay at lower cost. In this next section we'll talk about all the things we did in Cornwall with Carbis Bay as our base location. We've also tried to keep it as toddler friendly as possible so that it's enjoyable and less tiring for both us and our little one. 
Lansen is an iconic landmark located at the westernmost point of Cornwall. It's a geographic landmark where the land seems to end as it meets the Atlantic Ocean. The day we visited was bright and clear and we got to admire the stunning panoramic views of the ocean, the rugged coastline and the dramatic cliffs. Besides the viewpoints, there are some hiking trails too in case you'd like to spend longer admiring the views. If you're with kids, the place is stroller friendly from the car park to the entrance, the shops and a couple of viewpoints too. So bringing yours along might be a good idea. Lands End Car Park is convenient if you're driving down, but it's a paid parking. The best part though is that there are no charges to enter the Lands End premises, which essentially means it's free to visit. Lands End also features facilities like a children's playground, souvenir shops, and F&B options. In fact, we had a really good version of the cheese and onion Cornish pasty here. If you're looking for a quieter beach away from the crowds, then Hale Beach is a great option. It's a beautiful stretch of coastline located in the town of Hale and renowned for its vast expanse of golden sands and clear waters. The beach is backed by sand dunes and offers picturesque views of St. Ives Bay. From the car park, the access to the beach is via a sloping sandy path that can be easily done with toddlers and kids. The parking is a paid one until 5 p.m. after which it's free to park. Pendennis Castle is a historic fortress built in the 16th century by King Henry VIII as part of a defensive network of coastal fortresses. Its primary purpose was to protect the south coast of Cornwall from invasion. We bought the entry tickets on the spot which costed us pound 15 per adult. The castle is an excellent example of an artillery fortress that features a distinctive circular design with a central keep, curtain walls and gun platforms. Moreover, the castle is set in a picturesque location overlooking the sea and you can enjoy panoramic views of the town of Falmouth and the surrounding coastline. The path from the free car park to the castle is stroller friendly and so are the premises. Inside the fortress you cannot really move a stroller but you can easily do so everywhere else. The premises also has a nice little cafe where we enjoyed some delicious scones and cornish pasty along with tea. There's also a soft play area for the little ones in case you need to catch a break and let the kids burn off some energy. St Ives is a picturesque coastal town renowned for its beautiful beaches, vibrant arts community and historic charm. St Ives narrow streets are a treasure trove of handmade and artisanal goods. These winding cobblestone lanes are lined with a variety of boutique shops, craft stores and cafes. You can shop for locally made products such as Cornish treats, items like confectionery, jam spreads and teas, or lifestyle items such as soaps, candles, lotions and more. You may even stroll along the picturesque harbour and enjoy food and drinks at one of the many waterfront restaurants. We chose to have a relaxed evening at the cool and colourful Tretto Lounge, where we got some drinks and enjoyed dinner from their vegetarian and vegan menu. Of course, we had to visit St Ives beaches. We went to two of them. First, the Portmeor beach. one of town's most popular beaches which is really popular amongst the surfers too as a result it can get very crowded but benefits from facilities like a cafe right at the beach and easy accessibility it's also known for its spectacular sunsets many come down in the evening to watch the sun dip below the horizon the second one we visited was the portminster beach a serene and family friendly destination known for its cleanliness stunning vista and convenient location. It's a popular spot for both relaxation and water sports activities and also features facilities like a beach cafe, shop and toilets. We had a wonderful time here building sand castles and flying kites. For us, Portminster wins over Portmeor. A quick tip about parking in St Ives while you enjoy these beautiful views on your screen. 
Usually the parkings are small and get taken up quickly, especially near the beaches. Given this, you may consider leaving the car at your stay or away from the town center and take the bus into town instead. St Michael's Mount is a tidal island and historic castle situated just off the coast of Marazion, a town near Penzance in Cornwall. From the Marazion beach, the island is accessible by ferries at high tide and via a stone causeway on foot during low tide. St Michael's Mount has a rich history and has been used for religious purposes as a fortress and as a family home over the centuries. We bought the entry tickets on the spot which costed us pound 17 per adult. You can explore the village on the island which includes different buildings, a gift shop, ice cream parlor and a cafe for refreshments which offers gorgeous views as a bonus. The climb up to the 12th century medieval castle is steep in places but it's not very long and is doable for people with average fitness levels in our opinion. It's not ideal if you're with toddlers or young kids, but it can be done if you go slow and keep your patience. Consider bringing a toddler backpack along which will make your life easy up here. Up top, you'll be rewarded with breathtaking views which you get to admire from the battlements. The inside of the castle is intriguing to explore as well. The interiors are beautiful and it houses a cathedral too. Even though the day was tiring, we felt it was worth it and we recommend St Michael's Mount as a great place to visit. Now, it was time for us to head back to London. We had a fantastic time in this very first visit to the Cornwall. We do realize there's a lot more to explore in this beautiful county which just means that we'll be back for more. And we do hope that this gives you a starting point in planning your own Cornwall adventure. Thanks for watching. Do hit like, share, subscribe and don't forget to check out our other travel adventures from the UK and beyond. Bye for now and see you soon.